If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke, Luke chapter 2. We're going to start today in Luke, and we are going to end up in Genesis, and we're going to be talking today about favor. Everyone say favor. And we're going to look at a young man by the name of Joseph in Genesis 39. And many of you know we are in a series on heroes, and so we are still in Hebrews, and we're going verse by verse, and we're landing on Joseph. And what a story. I mean, you could go months and months talking about Joseph, an an incredible incredible life and a wonderful testimony of someone who um, went through difficulty, went through hardship, but God used in a powerful way to save a generation who was faced in famine. Now, can I remind you to hear today, as a nation, we're in a famine. The economy may be doing good, stock market may be doing great. You may have got a lot of equity in your home and and, and things are good, but we as a nation have a vacuum for leaders. Leaders like Joseph that walk in God's favor. And the solution to our problems as a nation or uh, uh, problems in your family or problems in your company, in your business is leadership. Godly men and women who believe that you have been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light and you have a purpose and a destiny to make a difference for Christ in our generation. And if you look at the story of Joseph, he was used powerfully to rescue a nation who was in famine. And the one mark about Joseph is that he walked in the favor of God. Everyone say favor. Favor. Now, you're going to look in your notes, and I'm going to give you the definition of what favor is, and then we're we're going to go to Luke chapter 2. If you're with me this morning, let me hear a a big amen. amen. Favor is the supernatural and tangible evidence of God's grace, approval, and blessings on your life so that you can benefit others. It's powerful. The favor of God is a supernatural and tangible evidence that God's grace, God's mercy, God's approval is on your life so that you can make a difference in this world. How many would agree with me that our nation and our world needs godly people who walk in the favor of God? I call it the it factor. And you see it and you recognize it and you're aware of it. It's called the favor of God. And I want you to walk in that. I can't force it upon you. I can't, I can't make it happen. It can only happen when you as a believer believe that favor is available for you. And can I tell you, there are a lot of Christians, there are a lot of believers that are unwilling to tap into the favor of God on their life. And they're willing just to settle in. They're willing just to coast They're willing just to go with the flow. And can I tell you, that philosophy is not biblical. God has saved you and rescued you. By the way, how many people are here, and and even people watching online, how many of you are here that God has rescued you and called you out of darkness? Can I see your hand? He's done that for a purpose. He's done that for a reason. You have a destiny and a purpose. God wants to use you in a powerful way to make a difference in the lives of other people. But if you don't want to tap into that, 
If you don't believe it's scriptural, if you don't believe that that's the way God intends it, then you will just live a life of what I call the enemy called average. Just coasting. Just, just getting by. Kind of my attitude when I was at Edgewater High School when it came to economics and math and science. I just wanted to coast by, not really interested in A's, don't want to be, yeah, C's are okay, but, you know, if I can get a D and just coast by, and that's why out of 850 students, uh, my class rank was, was 793. <laughs> that's when I was 17 years old. And then I tapped into a power. I tapped into a source. I had a youth pastor who believed and spoke purpose and destiny and vision and favor. And a guy who was 793 out of 825 students at Edgewater High School, a few years later, was honored the Edgewater High School Hall of Fame. Not because of anything that I've done. Though, because I believed at an early age that God wants to place favor on his people so that they can make a difference in their generation. Amen. Now, we don't have time today. I, we've got notes, and I've got a, a, two full pages. We're not going to get to all of these today, but we're going to get somewhere. But follow me just for a few moments. Thank you, Carl. Yes. The first message of the angel to Joseph and Mary was this. You're not perfect. You don't have it all together. But Mary and Joseph, you are highly favored. And Mary believed that message. Joseph believed that message. And in a complicated time in their life, they tapped into the phrase that the angel said to them, you are highly favored. God's grace, God's approval, God's blessing is on you, Mary and Joseph, and this is not about you, this is about them. And if you will receive what I'm saying to you, you will live a life of favor and you will be a blessing for other people, just like Joseph. And if Mary and Joseph walked in the favor of God, then you know what it says in chapter 2 of Luke? It says that Jesus walked in the favor of God. He grew, the Bible says, in wisdom. He grew in stature. He grew in the favor of the Lord. And the Bible says that God was with him. Now, here's a question for you today. If Joseph, Jesus' father, had favor... And Mary, Jesus' mother, had favor. And Jesus had favor. Where does that leave you as followers of Jesus Christ? Yeah, with favor. If you are a descendant of Jesus, that DNA that was in him and in Mary and in Joseph and in Jesus, that DNA is in you. And it's biblical. And it's to be expected that as, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are not just going to coast and blend in and have the status quo as normal. We are going to tap into a force that says, God, I believe your grace, your mercy, your approval, your blessing is on me. And I walk in the favor of God so that I can be a blessing to other people and you get glorified. See, this is not about you. It's about them. And it's about him. They get blessed 
and God gets the glory. And if you look at Joseph's life, that is exactly what this whole thing was about. He was thrown into a pit. He was uh, uh, despised by his brothers. He was sold into slavery. He was accused unrighteously. And yet at the end, in the middle of the famine, God rose him up and caused him to walk in favor so that a generation of people could survive in a famine. And if God did that for Joseph, he can do that for you. Can I get an amen? Amen. Joseph, his name means God has added. I like that. God has added. He has added to your life vision, purpose, destiny, courage, boldness. He's adding to your life so that you can be the believer that God wants you to be so that people will see you, they'll see your good good works, and they'll glorify God in heaven. We need more people in Pine Castle to believe in the favor of God. That would be a good time to say amen. amen. We need more people to believe that we're supposed to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. We're supposed to follow in the footsteps of Mary and Joseph. And if they walked in the favor of God, how much more could we walk in the favor of God? And the beautiful thing is, it's free. You guys like free things. I know. You go to Publix and get buy one, get one free. Why? Because you want to get something for free. How many like free things? Come on. How many like free things? Guess what? God's grace... God's favor, God's blessing is free. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to earn it. You don't get graded. It's simply available, but you've got to reach for it. You've got to want it. You've got to pursue it. You've got to be hungry for it. It's free. Watch this. It's free, but it will cost you everything. And when you walk in the favor of God, the Bible says that you then walk in the favor with men. And you begin to walk through doors, and you begin to see things happen, and suddenly you're living a life of purpose and destiny so that other people can be blessed and God gets the glory. And that's the story of Joseph. And I hope it's your story as well. I'm not going to make you. I can't force you, but I believe as disciples of Jesus Christ, we need to follow in the purposes and the destiny that God has for our life, and we are called to walk in God's favor. Can I get an amen? Amen. So let's take a few moments and go to a couple points here in in, uh, Genesis. I told you to go to Luke, but we just, we just bypassed that one. So go to Genesis now, and we're going to go to our notes and try to stay on task here. Pastor Scott's getting a little carried away. Right at the beginning. i just getting carried away. So here's the story of Joseph. He was the guy who had the coat of many colors. I'm going to talk about that for a few moments, and I'm going to get into my notes. His dad loved him. He was born in his old age, and so he decided to give Joseph a coat of many colors. The Bible doesn't say what colors the coat was. But as I was studying for this, I thought, what a shame for me to, 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 to preach about Joseph and the coat of many colors and for me to wear a black suit. So... I decided that I was going to get a little crazy, I was going to get a little wild, and I was going to preach in a coat of many colors. Wow. Now I'm ready to preach. I just need Bruce behind me on the B3 organ, and I'm ready to go. 
Now, I'm going to wear this Christmas Eve one more time because I <laughs> want to get a lot of bang up out of my $100 investment here. Watch this. Joseph's coat of many colors, the Bible doesn't say what colors they were. I've got, I've got a few ideas. My first idea was that it was a coat that was red. Symbolic of the blood that had to be shed pointing people to Jesus. That's just a thought. The other thought is maybe that coat of many colors was the rainbow. And I couldn't find a, a rainbow jacket, so uh, we'll just have to think about this for a few minutes. Maybe the coat was of all the colors of the rainbow, symbolic of Jesus and his redemption. So whether it was a coat of many colors or it was a coat that was red, Joseph wore that coat. Now watch this. It wasn't a coat that you wear on the outside. It was a coat, and if you look at the original language, that word there was tunic. Now stay with me. Tunic. It was an undergarment that may not be, have been exposed to everyone to see it, but when Joseph put that undergarment on, watch this, every time he put it on, it was a reminder to him that he was highly favored. Mm. It was foundational. It was not noticeable from the outside, but on the inside when he put on that tunic, when he put on that coat, he was reminded, you, Joseph, are loved. Joseph, you are called. Joseph, you have a destiny. Joseph, you are going to be used. Joseph, God is going to use you to redeem people in a famine. And every time he put that tunic on, he was reminded that the favor of God was on his life. It was like underwear. Every time he put it on, he was putting on courage. He was putting on destiny. He was putting on his purpose. He was putting on his calling. And he wasn't wearing a flashy coat to be seen by everybody. It was underneath. It was what drove him to become the man that God wanted him to be. And I think all of us, what we need to be reminded of every day when we put our tunic on, I'm loved I'm accepted. God believes in me. God wants to bless me. And it becomes part of who you are. And you've got to put it on every single day. Thank you, John. Without that garment, the enemy will come and try to pull you the enemy will try to come with words that, 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 that will distract you. The enemy will come with, 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 a, with a pull that will try to distract you from the calling on your life. That's why you've got to put it on every single day. See, in the Old Testament, it was a tunic. In the New Testament, it's a robe of righteousness. In the Old Testament, it might have been red. In the New Testament... It might have been red, but it was symbolic of the sacrifice that Christ made for your behalf so that you can make a difference in this world and you can walk in the favor of God. Are y'all with me this morning? And if it was good enough for Joseph, and if it was good enough for Mary, and good enough for Jesus, then it's good enough for me. In fact, let me give you a couple. Are y'all still with me? Let me give you a couple people. How many like my jacket? Noah, Joseph, Moses, Ruth, Samuel, Esther, David, Mary, the early church, and Jesus. All are recorded in God's word that they walked in the favor of God. And I want that for you.
So let me tell you a little bit, and let's unpack this. We've got a few more minutes. Number one, when you walk in the favor of God, here's your point number one, the first point. Number one, when you walk in the favor of God, favor will reveal and expose jealous and envious people into your life. See, now, I asked you how many of you want to walk in favor. All of you raised your hand. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you is this. When you walk in God's favor, it will attract jealous people. Envious people. People who look at you and say, who do you think you are? You're walking around with that fancy coat. You're walking around with that tunic. You're walking around thinking you're all that. And when you decide that you're going to make a difference and live for other people, it will attract jealous and envious people. How do I know that? Well, the first people that opposed Joseph were his brothers. They were jealous and they were envious. And if you're going to walk in the favor of God, you cannot be intimidated by average people who are jealous of you. You can't bow to their opinion. You can't bow to their culture. You can't bow to their, to their average because they will try to pull you down because they don't want to live a life of destiny, so their goal is to pull down anybody who wants to make a difference in this world. How many ever had jealous people in your life? Watch this. Chances are that when someone is jealous of you, it's not about you at all. It's about their fear, their jealousy, their boredom, and their insecurity. You see, insecure people don't want other people to be used by God and make a difference. And so Joseph now gets this tunic, Joseph gets this coat, Joseph gets this flashy red and black coat, and guess what? Opposition arose from jealous and envious people. If you want to live in the favor of God, my first suggestion to you is don't be intimidated by insecure, jealous people. See, the enemy's trying to distract you. See, there's a world out there that needs leaders and men and women who walk in the favor of God. And the enemy will use jealous and envious people to distract you so that you will take your eyes off of the mission and you finally start hearing what they have to say. It will distract you and keep you from what God wants you to do. Don't allow jealous and envious people to steal your destiny and purpose. Stay focused. Stay aligned. Walk in the favor of God. Put your tunic on every day and say, God, help me to be the man. Help me to be the woman. Help me to walk in the favor of God. And when opposition and jealousy arise, help me not to be distracted because I've got to keep the end goal in mind. And that's people who need godly leaders who walk in the favor of God. That would be a good time to say amen. amen. Number two, when you walk in the favor of God, I love this, favor will inspire you to dream beyond ordinary. Everyone say ordinary. I I call it the enemy called average. And the reason Joseph's brothers were upset at him was because he was starting to dream beyond just being average. And they didn't like it. Look in, look in, uh, uh, in Genesis 35. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers... They hated him all the more. I love what Eleanor Roosevelt once said. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Joseph had a dream. And if you're going to walk in the favor of God, that will cause you to have to dream bigger than just ordinary. God, there's a big world out there. Lord, use me to make a difference. God, use me to change the world. Use me, God, to to, to bring life and hope to people. And you got to dream big in order for God to use you in a big way. Can I get an amen? amen? Number three, I love this one. When you walk in the favor of God, favor will attract dream killers. 
How many's ever met a dream killer? A lot of them out there. They're dream killers. Go in your Bible real quick. I want to show you this. Go to, go to Genesis 37. Genesis 37. This is in your notes. But go to Genesis 37. Let me read the verse of Scripture to you. Favor will attract dream killers. Look at verse 19. Here comes that dreamer. They said to each other, Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a furious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. You know what his brothers were? They were dream killers. Now, write this down real quick. The city where this took place, place in was a city called Dothan. D-O-T-H-A-N. Everyone say Dothan. Now, I've been to Dothan. I've taken people from this church on our last tour to Israel, and we went to Dothan. I've been here. In fact, I was there, and we were there, and suddenly we were overwhelmed with hundreds of big sheep. And I mean big sheep. You know, we're all under the impression that sheep are cute and small. These things are about this big, and they were a couple hundred pounds. And within a couple minutes, I was surrounded by hundreds of sheep around me, and I was scared because they smelled and they were big, and they weren't cute and cuddly. They were big and ugly. And it was in Dothan where I saw, watch this, two wells. Everyone take your fingers and go like this and go two. Now watch this. You're going to live in one of two wells. There is a well that brings destruction a well that wants to kill dreams, a well that wants people to be average, a well that says just fit in and be like everybody else and you can live in that well or you can choose another well. Everyone say two wells. See, his brothers decided, they made a decision, we are going to be dream killers we want everybody to think like us, and we're going to throw Joseph in a, in a pit, in a, in a well, because we don't want him to achieve his dreams. And you can live in that well, or you can live in another well, a well that says, God wants you to dream. God wants you to accomplish. God wants you to live in the favor of God. God wants to use you in a great way, and you only choose from two wells. In the garden, there was two trees. In Dothan, there are two wells, and you get to choose which well you're going to live in. That's pretty good preaching, isn't it? And you know people who live in the well that kills dreams. You know people who just wake up every morning and they're determined to rain on your parade. They're negative, they're sarcastic, they're critical, and they're small thinkers. And they've chosen to live in that well. And then there's other people who say, I don't want to live that kind of life. I'm not going to spend my time on Facebook tearing people down. I want to make a difference. There's a famine in the land, and I'm going to choose to live in the well that says God wants to bless me, God wants to empower me, God wants to use me in a great way. That's the kind of well that I want to live in today. Can I get an amen? amen. And you're living in one of those two wells. And there are some of you here today who you are a believer, you are saved, you've been called, but you continually choose to live in a well that kills dreams. You live in a well that pulls people down. You live in a well that, that, that tears people apart. Let me ask you a question this morning. How is that working for you? You only got two wells to choose from. And I'm telling you, church, I want God to raise up men and women in Pine Castle who are going to live in the well of blessing. 
They're going to live in the well of favor. They're going to live in the well that says, I'm going to dream. And I may be 90 years old, but I'm still going to dream. Because the Bible and uh, 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 the prophet Joel says, in the last days, men and women are going to, old men are going to dream dreams. I'm going to live in that well. I'm going to live in the well of blessing, in the well of success, in the well of prosperity, so that I, we can be a blessing to other people. Are you all with me today? Let me just show this real quick. This came to me just the other day. And, and, and how many of you like my jacket? This is a PVC pipe. This looks normal. It's got a, got a hole in it. got one end and another end. And, and watch this. You are this PVC pipe. You are a conduit. Joseph was a conduit. Mary was a conduit. They were simply used. God is on this end, and he speaks life. He speaks purpose. He speaks destiny. He speaks courage. And you are simply the conduit that God uses to bless other people. See, at the end of this PVC pipe, is other people. You see, this is not about you. This is about them, and it's about him. And God wants to use you as a conduit where God will pour in, and it goes through you, and the end user benefits from it because you chose to walk in the favor of God. Now, who's got a penny? Who's got a nickel? Who's got a, somebody got a, got a, a penny. Who's got, who's got some money? I need some money. Does anyone carry coins anymore these days? You guys have seen it. Thank you, Hannah. What do you want? Oh, I want it all. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I'm going to illustrate coins, but this is not about money. This is about favor. This is about dreams. This is about destiny. This is about purpose. Watch this. God pours in, and that goes into the pipe, and you're the conduit. And when you live a life of favor, God will pour in, and he will use you, and the end result will be other people. You're simply a conduit. Joseph in Genesis 39 was simply a conduit. God poured in. He used him. People were blessed. Now, don't misunderstand. This is not about money. This is about purpose. It's about destiny. It's about vision. It's about favor. God wants to use you, and he will pour in so that other people may get blessed. Can I get an amen? amen? All right, Gary, I'm, I'm going to give that to you. Don't, don't, don't hit anybody with it. Number, number three. Number four, I'm sorry. I love this one. Number one, when you walk in godly favor, favor will reveal jealous people. Number two, favor will inspire you to dream beyond ordinary. Number three, favor will attract dream killers. I love this one. We're going to end with this one. Number four, favor will promote you to live a life of success so you can benefit others. Now, look in Genesis 39. I'm going to read this to you. Aaron, get ready to play a, a good favor song here in a second. Look in Genesis 39, 2 through, two through 6. And the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Everyone say prospered. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. And Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything his own, he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian leader because of Joseph. 
And the blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in his house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. And Joseph was in charge, and he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Watch this. Four times it says there, the Lord was with Joseph. God's favor was resting on Joseph. You see, when you choose to walk in favor, it will promote you to live a life of success so that you can bless other people. Now, watch this. Um, let me see. Um, Pastor uh, David, come up here just for a second. How many are still with me? Let me hear an amen. amen. Now, some of you, and I know because I get emails and phone calls and all sorts of comments sometimes. Some of you are offended by the word success. You don't like it. Can I remind you that the word success is biblical? I am not referring to, when I say success, I'm not referring to money. I'm not referring to the kind of house you have. I'm not referring to the size of your bank account. I'm not referring to the kind of car you drive. When I imply and use the word success from the biblical perspective, it's way more than just money. It's about influence. And Joseph was successful. That word there, success, if you look it up, this is what the word means. The word success means to push forward. Mm. Stay right there. God wants you to walk in favor so that you can benefit and other people can benefit. And God wants to make you a success and God will push you forward so that you will make a difference. God will push you forward so that you will be a voice. God will push you forward so that you will live a generous life. God will push you forward. And don't worry, I'm not going to push you off the platform. He will push you forward so that you will help people in a famine. That is success. It's God. And I just see it now. Breathing his spirit into people who want to walk in the favor of God. Here, let me point you this way so we can keep going here. Watch this. It's the, it's the Holy Spirit who says, David, I want to use you in a great way. David, I'm going to open up doors. David, I'm going to put you before kings and prophets. I'm going to push you forward. I want you to be a success. This is not about money. This is not about your house. This is not about your 401k. This is about you making a difference. People are counting on you. I'm going to push you forward so you can live a life of purpose and destiny. Go. We got more to do. Go. Oh, but God, I'm 90. I have no age requirement on my favor. I'll use anybody who's still breathing. Go. And he pushes us. Where are you going, David? Come back up here. We gotta, I, I, I got to push you some more. This is not violent pushing. This is a gentle breath of his spirit that says, I want you to succeed. Whew, go. I want you to be a blessing. Go. There's a famine. I want, to, I want to use you. Boom. And as long as Joseph honored God, God continued to push him forward. Are you all with me? Last Monday, I get a call from the governor's office. And they said, there's a national TV program that's coming to the villages. Would you mind being a voice at that town hall with Governor DeSantis? Watch this. I didn't apply for that. I didn't call and put my name in for that. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't fill out an application and try to make my way into that. I was minding my own business. But God says, Scott George, I want you to walk in favor, and I'm going to put my hand upon you, and the same anointing that's on me is on you, and God will open up doors. God will push us into opportunities, and all we got to do is be present to win and speak what God is saying. 
And if he can do it for an Edgewater High School 793 out of 825 guy, he can do it for you too. You know what we need? We all need to go down to K&G and get us a red jacket to remind us that we have the favor of God on our lives. And I stood before the governor on behalf of struggling people. I spoke to a national news audience on behalf of Pine Castle United Methodist Church. Why? Because God's favor is on me and it's on you too. Amen. To make a difference. It's not about you. It's about them. And it's about him. And by the way, God says this very clearly in Matthew chapter 5. Do your good works before men so that men may see your good works and what? Glorify God, our Father. And that's what Joseph did. It attracted, Je David, you're good. I'm, I'm done. I'm done pushing you. And the people that resist this kind of message are stuck in the mud. Wanting to coast. Don't rock the boat. Don't get too radical about this stuff. And they'll pull you into mediocrity, mediocrity if you let them. They'll pull you into average. They'll pull you into ordinary. And Joseph said, you can throw me in a well you can sell me into slavery. You can put me in jail. You can accuse me falsely of coming on to you. But God's favor is bigger than your opposition. Amen. God's bigger than your jealousy. God's bigger than your insecurity. God's bigger than your whatever. And he brought him out of jail. And he brought his brothers before him. And I love this at the very end. What Joseph said to his brothers is, watch this. You didn't do this to me. God allowed this so that I will become better to help more people. And in tears, his brothers wept and cried and wailed. And Joseph, because the favor of God was on his life, he forgave them. And walked in mercy and grace and released them and lived a life of prosperity and blessing to help people in a famine. Whew. Wow. 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 Good. Pastor John's gonna be in the back, and we've got a hundred coats like this that we're gonna <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you know what I want you to do this week? I want you to put on your tunic. I want you to put on your armor. I want you to put on your robe of righteousness. I don't really care what color it is. Just put it on to remind yourself, I have the favor of God on my life. God's going to push me forward. God's going to give me success. God is going to give me a voice. I want to make a difference in this world. And every time you put that tunic on, You'll be reminded of the beautiful robe of righteousness that's available through Jesus Christ. He wants to use you in a big way. And I'm thankful for the life of Joseph. He's a hero because he didn't give up. And he kept pushing through so that people in a famine would be blessed. Can I tell you something? There's people in a famine in your family. There's people in a famine in your business. There's people in a famine in your neighborhood. And God's looking for a Joseph to step up, put on the robe of righteousness, and begin to live in the favor of God. It's available. Would you stand up across the auditorium? You're going to put it on? You're going, to, you're going to let it sit in your closet? You want, to, you want to box it up with all your other junk? Why 
Which well are you going to live in? The well that tears people down and criticizes people and is cynical and mean-spirited and jealous? Or are you going to live in another well, a well that says dream big? Do what God's put in your heart. I believe in you. You only got two wells. Some of you have been growing up in the wrong well for a long time. You're, you're saved. You're spirit-filled, but you're living in a dirty well. You're going you're gonna to put it on and walk in it? Or you think it's only for a few select preachers on TV? Oh, let them do it. No, God wants you to do it. And I tell you, I've never done this before. But I believe it's prophetic and I believe it's powerful. And I wasn't planning to do this, but the Holy Spirit just told me. I'm going to go to the lobby. I'm I'm, going to put a mask on, although I've been vaccinated. I'm going to put a mask on. And and as you leave, I'm going to ask you, would you like to walk in God's favor? Do you want the favor of God to rest on you? Do you want to put it on? And I'm going to lay this on your shoulders as a, as a symbol that just like Joseph, he put on his tunic every single day. And every day he was reminded, God loves me. God believes in me. I've got a calling on my life. I'm here to make a difference. I'm here to dream big. God, push me forward. You're going to put it on? Or are you going to put it on your fireplace mantle and put a couple lights and sit in your sofa and, and, and look and gawk at, at, at something that needs to be put on and worn and lived out? You're going to put it on. And when you leave today, I'm not expecting every single person to want this draped over your shoulders. That'd be hypocritical. Choice is yours. You're going to put it on. Let's pray. God, raise up men and women in Pine Castle United Methodist Church. Raise up men and women that are watching all over Central Florida. God, raise up Joseph's. Raise up Mary's. God, raise up men and women who want to put it on. They want to be a voice. They want to make a difference. They want to be an influence in their generation. God, I pray you use them. Remind them to put on the robe of righteousness and the armor that you've given us. The tunic of favor to remind us that it's all about you and it's all about them. I pray your blessing over your people today. God, I pray that people will shift wells. They'll turn from the dirty well of jealousy and discord, and they'll jump into the well that encourages people to believe and to dream big. We silence the voice of the enemy today that says they're too old, too young, and I pray that you'll use them in a powerful way to make a difference like Joseph. In the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, 